Alrighty, welcome back to, I believe this is part 5 of the Golden Sun No Saber Quit tutorial series. Last time we got through Goma Cave, um, we saw how Forge was a bit of a jerk, and today we're going to go through Bilbin and Immel. Uh, Bilbin has the first and probably the only <laughs> shopping sequence, or se there's two shopping sequences actually, and this is the most significant one, believe it or not. And then we go up to Immel, and that's some of the most dangerous fights in the game because of the, of the basically the decision to go there first. Anyway, at this point in the run, we have just left Bilibin Cave. Um, oh, sorry, not Bilibin Cave, Goma Cave. And we're going to head in Bilibin. I like to do this little upright movement here just to hit with this bit of the collision to get here slightly faster. First thing we want to do in Bilibin is head into the weapon shop. Well, it's the weapon and armor shop. What we need to do here is we collected some things back in Bilibin, in particular this Water of Life, in particular this Bandit Sword, uh, and we want to um, sell these off in order to be able to buy some really cool things in Bilibin. We need to buy things for two reasons. First of all, we need to increase our damage output. Second of all, we need to buy armor to reduce the damage we take from Sardaros. That's pretty much the only reason we buy armor here is because Sardaros has a ton of physical damage that we can't avoid, and buying armor just greatly increases the success rate for the strategy. Um, so because of that, uh, it's worthwhile the time investment to pick up armor here. If you want to risk it, you don't have to get it. It's it's You can still do Sardaros without armor. It's just way more risky. So, we come to this first guy here for a reason. And that's because he is the, has the two big ticket items that we're going to buy. We're going to buy two broadswords, that's going to cost us 2,000 gold. Um, and that's, well, quite expensive. So uh, we're going to get that first and uh, go from there. First thing we want to do is we're going to want to go into the sell menu as I've strongly suggested here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to sell the short sword because it's not equipped to Isaac. If you didn't equip the uh, bandit sword earlier, you don't have to sell the short sword because we will uh, be buying the broad sword and then we can sell the short sword immediately after that. But since I equipped the bandit sword, I need to do this. It left to get to the water of life, sell the water of life. Because I've equipped the bandit sword, I don't actually need to sell the bandit sword at this point. Um, you can, it's, it may be slightly faster, I'm not entirely sure, um, but if you didn't equip the bandit sword then you would need to sell the bandit sword here instead of the short sword. I'm going to go to the buy, I'm going to hit this, buy this broadsword. It is by far and away the most expensive item here, it costs a thousand coins, it's basically equivalent in strength to the elven rapier which we used to get, um, but this is just better basically. Um, in a world where you are trying to save money for whatever reason, or you forgot the Water of Life, um, you can pick up the Elven Rapier in Bilbin Cave, we'll point that out as we go buy it, um, but it is slower to get that. Uh, it's slower because you'll generate more encounters and those encounters are slow. Anyway, Broadsword. Buy the Broadsword. Get the game tickets, because sometimes those game tickets actually matter. To we're buying the two broadswords, we're selling the two short, the, selling whatever equipment is attached when we do that, and that's fine. Now we dive into the armor menu. So the armor menu is relatively straightforward. Um, we need to get as much armor as possible. So we're going to get the leather armor, the travel robes, the leather gloves, and and the open helms. That's what we're going to get. We're going to try and get as much of that as possible and, and see how we go. So first of all, leather armor goes to Isaac and Garrett. Again, selling everything as we go by. Travel robe to, robe to Ivan. Leather gloves. So the bronze shield is actually more armor value than the leather gloves, but not by much, it's by like two or three defense points. So, this is, so the leather gloves are actually a far more cost effective shopping purchase, so we get those instead. So, get a set of those for everybody. And finally, the open helm. So, the open helm is just basically. Um, going to give us just some flat 
plus defense because we don't have anything equipped so that's actually a really significant defense boost actually more significant than most other things that we've purchased thus far simply because we don't have any um helmets equipped yet and there we go we've done a lot of shopping uh as you can see the money routing is pretty tight um it will largely be dependent on the encounters getting goma cave sometimes you're just going to run out of money for whatever reason these guys here, these game tickets sell for 37 coins a piece. You can, if, let's say we only bought 7 items, that is an open helm right there. So you can always sell these game tickets to make money back. If you really need to, you can sell this nut. That's 150 coins, that's actually quite significant. Alright, we got everything that we needed at least, and we're done. Alright, so now we can move on to the next round of herb routing. So the first thing we're going to do is we get up these stairs because we're going to get Gust. Gust is a Jupiter churn. We need to get Gust, obviously. Uh, there's this pot right here. There's a herb here. So we're going to pick up this herb. That's the only non-compulsory herb we're going to pick up. If you got a herb drop in Goma Cave, you can skip that herb. Um, I'm assuming we didn't, so... Oh, here we go. Excuse the ones and zeros that just happens when you use the debug mode sometimes. Down we go, we're gonna put this guy out of the way, get Gust. Notice the distance from where you can speak to Gust from. See how I've kind of like just crept out from this corner here? You can press A from that distance and you can talk to Gust, that's kind of cool. Just saves a little bit of backtracking time since we need to backtrack all the way. Unfortunately you can't push the statue into the water, get stuck. So we have to backtrack all the way, which is fine. If you didn't get the herb, you could get the herb now if you really wanted to, but that's fine. Anyway, we're done with, with shopping for now, and uh, we'll revisit the herb routing in a moment, but we're done. Now we can move into encounter strategy. Now that we have all this armor attached to us, we're actually almost invincible. <laughs> um, I, I say that uh, possibly with some bad things that could happen to us, but I, 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 nothing bad usually happens. Um, sometimes some people want to take the inn um, in Billabin just to recover all your PP and HP. You really don't. We have so much armor and we're just not going to take any fights until we have Ramses at the very least. So we're just going to run to Billabin Barricade and... Um, basically run away from any fight that we get. I'm not even going to touch the gin. We're just going to run straight to Bill and, Bill and Barricade. And run straight to Kalima Forest. And why Kalima Forest and not Kalima? Uh, just, just watch this, right? Watch how much damage we don't take. Should probably have healed Garrett, but that's fine. We're taking like 6 damage, 7 damage, it doesn't really matter. Probably want to heal someone like Garrett who's only got 26 HP, but you know, generally speaking, you're totally fine. Alright. So I often get asked the question, why are we doing why do we go to Kalima Forest before Kalima? So what you, what we what we do is we run up here, we go into Kalima Forest, we get these cutscenes and we visit Kalima. What we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna illustrate what happens if you go to Kalima first. You get this additional cutscene right here. So Isaac, Garrett, and Ivan are going to have a conversation amongst themselves. Ivan's going to walk over to this tree and use Mind Read. We get all this additional cutscene, blah blah blah, and now finally we get this. If you want, we can time this out. Notice the timer in the bottom right, I'm just going to put auto fire on. I don't want to miss the bit. Alright, that took an additional 35 seconds, all of that stuff. So that that that's quite slow as you can see. Uh, let's just calculate the difference here. We get this cutscene here, they blow up. Yeah, 
And there we go. So that's the difference. It's about 20 seconds of time loss between the two things happening, just going there. So it's actually slightly faster just to dive into Kalima and then dive into Kalima. Uh, it's climb sorry, dive into Kalima first and dive into Kalima. I guess, based on this evidence here, that you, there's only like 20 seconds of difference, that there is an argument that you could get less encounters by going to Kalima, for, for Kalima first and thereby saving the additional time. I still think that going Kalima Forest and Kalima is going to yield the best result. So, uh, that's what I think. Anyway, feel free to do whatever you like. Cutscene, cutscene, cutscene. Alright, so Laurel's going to give us this big spiel about stuff. And the reason I didn't just skip this cutscene here is because we're going to get this series of yes, no dialogue boxes. This is the one of the few instances in the game we're saying no is going to be faster. So the first dialogue after Laurel, we're going to say yes. Next one, we're going to say no. And that's going to end the cutscene as fast as possible. Now we're going to head back to Kalima. Very unlikely to get an encounter. Run down here. Now, back on herb routing for a moment. There is a backup herb in this jar if you really need it. So if you've her used a, a herb, a healing item somewhere and you need to pick up an extra one, there's one in this pot right here, but you don't need it usually. Around the back of this tree. Annoyingly, there are actually encounters in Kalima uh, basement. One damage. Oh, check. Nice. One damage. Nice. Again, just running away from all the encounters here. There's no reason to take any fights at this point. Um, it takes too long to, to defeat them. Running away is faster. And we don't need the experience or anything like that, so it's totally fine. pick up granite. We really need granite. Granite is such a useful gem. Um, obviously granite's quite the detour, right? Like we've, we've gone, we want to go to Sardaros, which is in Mercury Lighthouse or the Emil area. Um, okay, right, so before I give my spiel about granite, moving the gin so we have this configuration is useful. Um, I basically set up for Ramses because Ramses will basically one hit KO everything until Bilbin Cave, and even in Bilbin Cave, it's going to be incredibly potent. So I've set things up like this so that when Ramses is used, Flint and Granite are consumed, and then they both recover at the same time because every character recovers one gin per gin recovery. So because Flint and Granite are used, and the gin are distributed between Isaac and Garrett, that means that they will recover as fast as possible. We're going to leverage that to the best of our ability. But if you want to take fights, you can start taking fights. But at this point, I still don't think it's worth it. So I continue to run and I'm going to keep running all the way through to Billiman Cave. Now, picking up granite now is a detour and you are going to do a whole bunch of extra overworld movement. You are going to incur a whole bunch of extra encounters. That's annoying. Um, but I still think it's worth it. Basically, Ramses is, is, on average, going to lower the encounter time in Billabin Cave by about 14 seconds per encounter. That's actually huge. If you're getting four encounters in Billabin Cave, that is, on average, uh, about a minute and... Well, how, how much time is that? 14 times 4 is... Uh, 56, I want to say. Yeah, 56. Um, so that's basically a minute saved just by faster encounters with having granite. Add in the encounters in Immel, and you basically made up all the time investment by running there and back. If you haven't gotten an encounter, um, I'll just flip back to encounter strategy real quick. If you haven't gotten an encounter by the time you get to Billabin, what I like to do here is just to enter and exit. That's going to reset your encounter rate and in theory, minimize the amount of encounters it takes to get to uh, Bilton Cave. So, continually running, no problems, still running away from things, no big deal. Text first, that's nice.
Oh, by surprise, that's less nice. Okay. Notice the path I'm taking through this forest here. I'm pretty sure this minimizes the amount of counter generated. Um, but sometimes you get unlucky, I guess. So you could just take the, this walk all the way around here, but I don't think you actually end up any better off. So I like to go th cut through the forest here, make use of this little bit here, because this here is not forested area, and just kind of minimize the steps like that. But yeah, basically personal preference if you want to go around or not, I think the time here is definitely worth it. If for some reason you didn't get the two broadswords, at this point you'd want to cast Growth and climb along and get the, the Elven Rapier. Again, useful if you forgot the Water of Life or you had to use it for some reason, um, which is a bit odd if you're using it that early, but sure. Um, so you have that option to play with. The Elven Rapier is just as strong as the broadsword, if not stronger, so you can get it if you want. But it is slower to get, so it's faster just to go through Billabin Cave like this. So. Once we enter Buildman Cave, we're going to heal up. We'll also increment this over to Buildman Cave. So we're going to heal up and get ready for things to blow us up, basically. So we've got Ramses primed, we've got Forge here, and Gust. We're not going to use them, but we are going to use these two. You can set Gust for more powerful rays, but it's not going to make any difference. Alright. This is a fantastic encounter to get. So this here is actually the worst encounter you can get. Almost everything else will die to a Ramses and a Ray. Here, they're not going to die. The troll here has got 101 HP. If the troll was in the center, using Ramses and Ray on, on the troll would kill everything. But because it's on the edge, it's now going to be really annoying to kill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Ramses, I'm going to use Flare, and I'm going to use Ray on the troll. That's annoying. So for a troll, you need at least one of Ramses or Ray to target it. Um, in this case, uh, we had Ray target, and otherwise that fight was fine. That is a really slow fight, um, but that's as bad as it gets. If you take an extra turn off, so basically the way Gen Recovery works is if you use a summon on one turn, and then for some reason there's an additional turn like there was in that fight, the two gin, uh, the gin that we, we use would recover on that turn, on the following turn, so you get one tick of recovery. Usually we're going to clear fights in one turn, in which case these guys will still be on standby until we get a PP regen counter to, to tick over. In this case, we, we actually recovered these guys, so we'll, we'll stand by them again. So we're going to keep doing this, we're going to keep standbying Ramses because it's fast, hits hard, we'll blow up all the encounters here. Hopefully we get a fast encounter here. Here we go. We actually have attacks first here. So normally you would run away from things with attacks first, but I want to illustrate uh, the power of Ramses and Ray. Ramses, Ray, and boom. Easy. So now watch the PP region counter on the left there. Once that ticks over, you hear that click sound. That click sound tells you that the gin have recovered. So we're going to set these gin and proceed on. Fantastic. We've gotten through Billabin Cave. Unfortunately, the Immel Overworld is even more dangerous. So the Immel Overworld has these guys called the Mauler. The Maulers are by far and away the most dangerous enemy in this part of the game. Gonna move around here again, minimi minimizing uh, time spent in forests and things like that. So the Mauler here is very dangerous. We're gonna do Ramses on the Mauler. We're gonna attack the Ooze because I think it needs extra damage, and use Ray. Actually, it doesn't need extra damage. Fortunately, both Isaac and Ivan will outspeed. We're going to keep healing after all of these fights because, again, Maulers are scary. Uh, but if we get the double Mauler fight, uh, that is kind of scary. There are strategies in the notes that will tell you how to deal with a double Mauler, um, but 
you know, you just have to roll with the punches. So check those out when you get a chance. I should explain my movement there. Let's go back. Did I just see? Okay. So there's two ways you can go around here. You can either go around this way, or you can do what I just did and cut straight through. Notice how I get this tick of shadow here. So this means this is not forested area. So if I cut through, hug the edge like this, I'm minimizing my time spent at the forest. I can dodge the forest and get to Emil. And that just saves a lot of movement around the edge, because look at the, the difference, right? This is actually quite a considerable walk all the way around. Uh, personal preference though, if you feel more comfortable going around, that's totally fine. You will probably generate less encounter step, but uh, I haven't done the math on it. Um, and that's, that gets us to Emil. Um, let's see if we can get another bad encounter just to illustrate things. You're not sufficiently bad. I want a really bad encounter. Uh, that's still not that bad. Still not that bad. Still not that bad. Not that bad. That is pretty bad. Okay. So, um, the other bad encounter I was looking for is the, the double molar. Um, but this guy here is pretty, pretty terrible as well. So there's not much you can do about this guy, right? Like. Um, when I look at this fight, I see the Mauler as the biggest threat. These oozes are also pretty dangerous. Um, I know I can outspeed the Mauler, um, and maybe I can outspeed these oozes as well. So, you basically get to make this really annoying decision between, uh, do I think the Mauler or these three oozes are more dangerous? I'm going to go and try and clear all three oozes, and then deal with the Mauler on the following turn. Or even I'm going to try this. So clear out the oozes, ah, and I lost these speed ties, so that's really unfortunate. If Isaac had won the speed tie, then uh, the oozes wouldn't have gotten an action. This is now worst case scenario, but that's fine. Damn it, the mole didn't die, that's fine. Now we have a very awkward situation on hands because they've like split quite considerably. Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to do... gonna do that. Damn it, didn't work. That's how bad these things can go. Um, sometimes the decisions you choose uh, are not the right ones in this case. Because Isaac didn't outspeed the oozes, that meant that uh, they got to split off and made that fight extremely awkward, but you get better at these things as you get more experience with them, so it really is just a matter of experience. But anyway, we don't need to take the extra fights, so that was just more of an example. So finally, we're now at Emil. Okay, so Emil, there's some fun things to talk about. So at Emil, uh, there's actually a lucky medal in this grave, but we're not going to use the fountain at all, so we'll just walk right past it. First thing we do is we come in here, say yes. Yes, she gives you two text boxes, it's still faster than saying no. There's a small minor glitch here, uh, our favorite glitch in the run, the lost cap glitch. Casting move and instantly cancelling it will knock the cap off of the snowman, so that's kind of fun. It also has the handy dandy side effect of actually putting the collision onto the ice. So this, the snowman collision is actually there, it allows us to enter the cave, pick up fever. Fever is very important. Jump in here, go through all these cutscenes, oops, I need bug mode on. Really important that we get this bottle here. If we don't get the bottle, that's going to be a real feels bad later on. And one last thing we need to talk about in Emil before we move on. If for some reason you've used up all of your herbs, here is the shop. There's some additional text because she's like, ah, my mom is sick. And uh, you can buy some herbs from her. 
if you are feeling particularly wrecked from your journey, you can always take this in here. I don't think you need to take it on average, but uh, you should know that it's there. If you go to the shop, you can exit in all this way. However, exiting through the bottom is no different from exiting to the side in terms of practically making it to Mercury Lighthouse. And so that about covers this tutorial. Um, this is where things really start to get complicated. Uh, there's a lot of uh, thinking and routing at play here, and hopefully I've let you into enough of my thought process so that you have a better idea of what you're doing at this point. Um, you, you really should be using the notes so that you have something to go off of in a run and you actually have all this stuff in your head. Um, otherwise, I'm just kind of trying to point out some of the intricacies as we go through. So yeah, uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, we'll, we'll keep going and next time we'll do all of Mercury Lighthouse and Sardaros, which is again a ton of intricate routing and a lot of the preparatory work that we've done to this point has been specifically for the Sardaros fight as that is one of the most difficult fights in the whole run. Anyway, until next time, uh, we'll see you there.